Let's go over what's new in Flutterflow in 2023. Let's start with the backend features. We made three updates to state management. First, you can now access a component's individual widget state. When setting a variable, go into widget state, go into your components. Here's a form with three different components. And now I can access the widget state within each element. Secondly, we've extended options for scoping your application variables. You can now create local page state variables local component state variables with multiple defining types, as well as global app state variables. This will allow you to define variables efficiently and keep components reusable. Lastly, we've separated pages and widgets into a widget class which controls UI and a model class which controls state. This will make it easier for you to make changes to the code if you're exporting out of Flutterflow. Next, we launched the Flutterflow CLI client. On your account page, you can generate and copy your API token, add it to your ID of choice, we're using VS Code in this case, and run the command to export your code directly from Flutterflow. Flutterflow now allows you to execute backend query caching to reduce reads to your database. You can toggle this on when accessing the backend query of your widget and set the scope and name of your query. This will greatly improve the user experience when loading from a backend or from an API. Next, Conditional Actions had a major update with the ability to support multiple branches. With this update, you can incorporate if-else structures into your action flows. This enhancement simplifies and accelerates your ability to create complex and dynamic business logic within your application. We also now allow code expressions, which make it easy to perform math operations or use a Dart expression without having to write a whole custom function. When adding code expressions, you can define multiple arguments from variables, write in your expression, and you can check for errors. Next, you can now execute Firebase App Check to prevent unauthorized clients from accessing your backend. Simply navigate to your project settings, toggle it on, and complete the setup process on Firebase. Next is accessibility and documentation. You can now add documentation that will appear as comments if you will be exporting code out of Flutterflow. Also, you can now add a semantic description for your widgets for accessibility and SEO purposes. With our Swagger slash Open API feature, you can now have 200 API definitions ready for use. Simply download your API definition from GitHub, import it directly into Flutterflow, and then view all of your imported APIs. Next, our OpenAI Codex integration now allows you to create custom actions using this powerful tool. Once we access our action skeleton, let's ask the AI to generate an action to check internet connection. And now we can utilize this generated sample code within our Flutterflow project. Furthermore, with the ability to now edit main.dart, we can now initialize this call at the beginning or end of the main function. This allows you to initialize pub.dev packages that require setup in the main.dart file directly in Flutterflow. And if you're working with a team, you can now use team custom functions and custom actions in shared team components. Let's go ahead and add a team function into our new project here. This will allow us to create UI UX patterns that can be reused across projects. To cap off the development features, I'll give you a bonus feature. If you're already using the CLI, you can make your export code from Flutterflow even faster by utilizing our open source VS Code extension. Simply download the extension from VS Code Marketplace, set it up, and now you can easily download your code for your projects much faster. Now let's move on to a few key design updates. We have an all new themes editor. In the design systems tab, you can set breakpoints for responsive visibility, depending on how you want your application to appear on every device. You can also set up new loading indicators from a wide variety of selections. Next, our colors tab lets you set and select colors to design your apps dynamically. You have the ability to explore different colors, import directly from coolers, and you can also extract colors directly from images. Builders now also have the ability to set a wide variety of typography types that can be adjusted throughout the project seamlessly. And last but not least, one of our favorite new features, the ability to create custom themed widgets. Here, you can create stylized widgets that can be utilized throughout your app. This create new widget is being used on a few different pages within our application. Now I can go back to the parent widget and any adjustments that I make to the parent themed widget will be replicated across the entire application. Now, if we go back to our application, you can see that all the theme widgets have been updated accordingly. Finally, if you're building with a team, we've got a few great features for you. Real-time collaboration means multiple users can now make edits and modifications together in real time. 
Check out the split screen of me and a team member making edits on the same page of our application. Changes are reflected fairly quickly and you no longer have to wait to edit your pages. This powerful upgrade means your entire project team can now collaboratively work on any part of your project. Note that this is only available within the Teams plan. And if you're not sure who's done what, you can check out the new project activity log for Teams. Flutterflow now stores a running history of changes made while building, making it much easier for you and your team to track progress. Teams users can access the last seven days of project edits, while Flutterflow Enterprise users can access and download all previous project edits. To top it all off, we're going all in on AI. In March, we kicked off AI Month with an announcement from our CEO announcing a limited release of AI Gen. If you have access, you can give AI Gen a text prompt and let us build you an AI generated app page that you can insert into your project directly. You can keep making adjustments to the text prompt until you get an app generation that you'd like to start with. Then you can scroll through a list of themes and different colors, select between light and dark mode, and then you can go ahead and give the generation a rating to improve upon the technology, as well as download the code. We're hoping to release new updates and features on AI Gen soon, so keep an eye out. Also during AI Month, we launched a series of templates that can help you integrate ChatGPT and OpenAPI custom actions into any Flutterflow project. We also kicked off the month with a partnership with Replicate to allow you to create a stunning responsive app with almost any ML model. However, our partnerships did not stop there. After launching our partnership with Supabase, we announced Supabase email authentication support in Flutterflow to expand our partnership. Next, we integrated Razorpay to make it easier for Indian businesses to accept payments from credit cards, UPI, net banking, and digital wallets. And then we expanded our backend options by creating backendless and AppRite marketplace templates to help you build with the backend of your choice. And then we partnered with Giphy to allow you to bring some hilarious gifts and joy to your applications. We've made a lot of progress in the last few months and we're continuing to grow our feature list to help you build faster, build more efficiently at scale and build different. Be sure to follow us on YouTube if you want to keep up with our product updates. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.